Hey everybody, it's Bolshe here, back with another Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous build video. Today we're going to be looking at the Ronin. This is my take on the classical samurai character, an honor-bound warrior who dedicates himself to a life of service and martial perfection. This build specializes in mounted combat, specifically charging into the enemy lines and doing a ton of damage. Although the Aeon and the Angel Mythic Paths are probably the most fitting thematically, this build works with any Mythic Path and even works really well as a mercenary. So just a quick overview of the build before we get into the level by level. We're going to be taking six levels of Sohei, four levels of Two-Handed Fighter, and then ten levels of the Gendarme archetype of the Cavalier. Now this gives us a ton of feats. I don't think I've ever done a build that has this many feats. You have 22 feats. And after I got everything I wanted, I still had five feats left over. So I went with Great Cleave, uh, Cleaving Finish, and then the Vital Strike feats, because you can get all of those things. So that's what I went with. But this gives you a lot of space to tune this build to be, um, you know, whatever you want it to be. And like I said, it really works with any Mythic Path or even as a Mercenary. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the build. We are going to take our first level in the Monk Sohei archetype. This is a mounted monk. Gives us some pretty cool things. First of all, it gives us a mount, gives us mounted feats for bonus feats at level one, two, and six. And we also get the cool feature that we get weapon training at level six, and the Sohei can flurry, which means get an extra attack at their highest attack bonus um, with any weapon that they have weapon training with. So we're gonna be taking pole arms, that's gonna give us extra attacks with pole arms. Gonna go human, pretty important for my uh, idea of a samurai and or actually a ronin so a ronin is a samurai that kind of um, either fell out of favor with his lord or his lord died and he kind of becomes a wandering um, samurai so wanderer and nomad is what i'm going to go with this also gives us a plus three bonus to our animal companion's health so all works out we're gonna go 19 strength 14 dex 12 constitution and 14 wisdom Wisdom, because this is going to give us, well, first of all, it gives, gives us will saves, perception. It also gives us AC because we're a monk, as long as we're unarmored. I will stay unarmored for a little while, but I think that a samurai's armor is kind of um, integral for the whole samurai build concept. So we'll do this for a while, but eventually once I start getting some good full plate, then I'm going to have this guy armored. Definitely want mobility. All of your mounted feats and skills are based on your mobility score. That's another reason why we took high dexterity. So this is really important. I'm also going to go with athletics, perception, and maybe a little religion here, or, or nature for the horsies. Our first feat is going to be power attack. I'm mainly taking this because we're rushing towards cleaving finish as soon as possible. So we're going to take power attack first level and cleave with our bonus human feat. We are going to be riding a horse. I'm going to go with the black horse. And for my monk feet, you can see here we get our um, we get our mounted feats as options. But I think I'm going to go crane style first. Crane style or spirited charge, either one is fine. And I'm going to go with the Rory. We're also going to go. I'm going to go awful good. Awful neutral is a, a good choice if you're just completely devoted to order. But I think awful good is what I'm going to go. At level two, we're gonna go in Sohei. We're gonna take our first six levels in Sohei to get that weapon training as soon as possible. And here I'm gonna take Spirited Charge. Charging into combat, storming through the enemy defenses is a big part of this build thematically. Our feet at level three, now we can get Cleaving Finish. We're Spirited, Spirited Charge gives us double damage on charge attacks when you are mounted. So um, you're pretty much going to kill something. If you get a charge off, something's going to die. And now if somebody else is in our melee range, we get to do a cleaving finish onto them. So this is all very good stuff. We also get key power extra attack when we're not charging. Level four, increase our strengths, get our skills. We get a plus two bonus on enchantment effects. And, as a swift action, a Sohei can spend one point from his key pool to grant any weapon he wields a plus one enhancement. That will be pretty good. That will be pretty good in the early levels. But I'll probably use extra attack. You get uh, Magical Glaives pretty quickly in this game. 
Our feet at level five is going to be, what is our feet? Outflank, yeah, we have a BAB five, so we can go ahead and take outflank. And I don't think this matters. These style strikes only apply when you are um, using unarmed attacks. So I'll pick up leg sweep, but we're never gonna use it. We also are immune to diseases, which is really nice. Diseases can be kind of frustrating in this game. At level six, we're gonna take our last level of Sohei. Our key power, you know, for being mounted, I think I wanna go sudden speed. I like the idea of like driving your mount um, to, you know, beyond its, its limits and making it, pushing it faster. Bark skin is nice, true strike is nice. True strike into charge would be really good actually, but I, I think, you know, I like pushing them out faster than anything else. I'm also gonna take mounted combat. Now, once per round when your mount would be hit in combat, you can attempt a mobility check to negate the hit. So it gives your mount some survivability. And, you know, we're going with the, um, the Naginata theme, which as far as I can tell, the closest weapon in the game to a Naginata would be a glaive. There's also a lot of good reasons to choose glaives. Number one, you get, get a book in the prologue that will permanently increase your damage your attack and damage with glaives by one. That stacks with everything else that we have. And um, there's a ton of magical glaives in the game. So I think this is a really good choice. All right, at level seven, we are going to start taking levels in two-handed fighter. It's gonna go along with that, uh, the Naginata theme, which is a two-handed weapon. So we got weapon training um, from Sohei. And now we're going to kind of double down on that. Let's see here. Our feet is going to be, we're going to take weapon focus, glaive. And we are also going to take dazzling display. Now, eventually what we're going to do here is we're going to be intimidating things while we attack. And we want to get shatter defenses to catch people off guard, catch them flat footed. So these are prerequisites for that. Our next level, two-handed fighter. Increase your strength. I'm going to try and keep athletics and perception about the same level. But we get less feats, or less skills here, so you kind of have to sacrifice. And actually, I put improved critical down on the spreadsheet. I think I'm going to swap that with um, 10th level, because the glaive is really not that great of a crit weapon. It's got a very low critical threat chance. So I think what I'm going to do is instead of going improved critical here, I'm actually going to get Shatter Defenses first. And um, this allows us to attack flat-footed AC every time you attack a uh, Shaken target, which is going to be a lot. There's a lot of things that give the Shaken debuff. At level 9, we're going to take our third level of Fighter here, get Mobility Max. That's what I want maxed. And now we're going to take Boon Companion. We've taken three levels. We really don't want our horse to become under leveled for the enemies we're facing. If your horse dies, you get um, knocked prone and you take attacks of opportunity. It's, it's bad news. So you really wanna keep your, um, your pet alive as much as possible. And finally, we're gonna take our fourth level of fighter here. That's gonna qualify us for weapon specialization. Our bonus feat, we're gonna go improve critical. Clay. By the way, this build has a ton of extra feats. We get to a point at the end of the game where you really have like four feats that you can do whatever you want with. If you don't like the glaive, I mean, the glaive is probably the closest thing to the Naginata. So I'm, I'm being, um, you know, I'm trying to be historically accurate. But if you don't like the glaive, you can easily get exotic weapon proficiency and take Fauchard, which is a much better weapon. It's got a much higher crit range and you're gonna see big numbers a lot more often. You're gonna see bigger numbers when you crit with the glaive, but the faux shard is a good weapon. There's just less of those in the game. There's less magical faux shards than there are um, glaives. And that's our last level fighter. And now we're going to go into Cavalier and we're just gonna finish out with the gendarme archetype. This lets us get, usually Cavaliers get bonus teamwork feats, which are quite honestly, after you get a couple of them, it's kind of trash. So we are going to get combat feats, which we can spend on anything we want. And here at level 11, we are going to take Shatter Defenses. We already got that. We're going to take Dreadful Carnage. 
as I pick up Dreadful Carnage, I completely forgot that we want to be leveling up Persuasion. So I'm going to get caught up in Persuasion as we level, but and also put a note in the video that um, you definitely want to go Persuasion. If we're intimidating, we want Persuasion. It's also, you know, it's thematic for charging into battle and intimidating your enemies. And Order of the Sword is perfect. Cavaliers who join the Order of the Sword dedicate their lives to the Code of Chivalry. I mean, Bushido, which is the uh, samurai kind of code of conduct, is, is basically the uh, Eastern equivalent or analog to the chivalric code here. So this is pretty much perfect for a lot of reasons. Also, mechanically, it gives us um, a plus two morale bonus against people of a certain alignment. So we're going to take chaotic. And also we get challenge, which gives us a morale bonus on attack against targets of our challenge. And at level eight, we get a bonus mounted feat. And we also get to add our horse's strength modifier to our damage roll whenever we make charge attacks. So our charge attacks are massive once we pick that up. It's going to be late in the game, but um, it's still going to be fun when we get it. And at this point, we are going to take, we're going to take weapon specialization, glaive. At level 12, we're going to go back into gendarme, increase your strength. Your skills, like I said here, I'm actually just going to max my persuasion as soon as possible. You should be leveling up persuasion um, as you level. By my honor, we get to pick one um, alignment and um, a saving throw that goes along with that. So what this means is any chaotic creature that casts something on us that requires a will saving throw, we're going to get a plus two bonus. And I'm going to go with that. Will saving throws are definitely our weakest saving throw. So we want to try and shore that up a little bit. Level 13, go back into gendarme. Trying to get my persuasion caught up. It's pretty close, actually. All right, let's see here. At level 13, we are going to go with trample for our mount. And uh, this gives us the ability to ride down enemies. And when we ride them down, they get knocked prone. I'm going to try this out on the demo, the level 15 demo. We'll see how this actually works, because I haven't done it. And our bonus feat is going to be Intimidating Prowess. So now those Intimidation checks are going to go a lot easier. Because we get to add our Strength modifier in addition to our Charisma modifier uh, whenever we use Persuasion to Intimidate. At level 15, no, this is level 14. I'm just going to catch my persuasion up. I'm going to get my mobility up next. Nothing at level 14. All right, at level 15, another level of gendarme. Get our skills and our feet at level 15. Now, this is the point in the game where this build gets so many feats that it's really up to you. I mean, there's a lot of different um, options to go for. I think I'm going to go the route of cleaves. So let's get this great cleave going. And once we pick this up, we're going to be able to get improved cleaving finish, which is really good. At level 16, we're going to take another level of gendarme, increase our strength, get our skills caught up here, mobility and persuasion. And at level 16, at this point, again, you're kind of... Uh, on your own for skill choices, whatever you want. Improved Cleaving Finish is very good though. With Improved Cleaving Finish, you can use Cleaving Finish any number of times per round. Whenever you kill somebody with a melee attack, you get a, an additional free melee attack on somebody in range. And since we're using a ranged weapon or a reach weapon, uh, we can really get a lot of use out of this. All right, at level 17, we are gonna be taking Cavalier, Gendarme. Get our other skills caught up a little bit here. And our feet at a level 17, you know, we do still get, let's see, how many feats left do we have? Um, at this point, we have all the offense feats that we want. And we get three more feats. So, I mean, if you wanted to, I think it'd be kind of cool just to have a fun button to press. I like Vital Strike. You could throw it in. It's not the worst thing in the world. You could also, you know, get Iron Will and shore up your saving throws. Um, that's a good choice as well. It also fits the samurai theme. Um, really up to you at this point. I'm going to grab Vital Strike just because it's fun. I like fun abilities to press. Level 18, we are going to get... Now, Vital Strike doesn't work with Charge or Spirited Charge. Actually, though, I have noticed that we're getting extra Spirited Charge damage after we make our initial charge attack, like if you charge before initiative is rolled. So maybe I can charge once 
and then vital strike on the next round and get spirited charge on that as well. In which case, that would be ridiculous. Um, so here we go, indomitable mount. That's gonna be our mounted mastery choice. We were saving this for um, this particular level up here. We also get to add our mounts strength modifier to our damage roll whenever we make a charge attack. So fully buffed, our mount is gonna have a pretty respectable strength uh, bonus and that's really gonna to add to our charge damage. If you like to see big numbers, I have a feeling we're gonna see some big numbers when I do this level 20 demo. I'm gonna take improved vital strike, and with our bonus feat, I'm gonna take greater vital strike. And at level 20, might as well finish out with gendarme. I don't think there's anything from any other class that we really need. What do we get here? Nothing here, level seven. You know, maybe you want to make your um, your weapons cold iron. It really doesn't matter. You're getting pet levels, and you're getting full VAB. I don't really want to do a one level dip in like Blood Rager or something because that was you know just not part of the build, not part of the build theme at all. And there we go. Now, I'm not going to do a full Mythic Path Guide for this one. This one could work with a lot of different Mythic Paths, specifically because of the lawful nature Aeon and Angel. But um, I'll just go through my abilities. I went with Mythical Beast, Mythic Charge, Unrelenting Assault, Abundant Key, and Ever Ready for my Mythic abilities. And my Mythic Feats, I went with Power Attack, Improved Critical with my Glaive. At this point in the game, I was taking Vital Strike, so I grabbed Mythic Vital Strike, Weapon Specialization, and Weapon Focus. You might want to switch Vital Strike and Weapon Specialization. Maybe not. And that's really about it. All right, here we go, a little demo at level six. I did go to six because I wanted to get weapon training and that extra attack, but you can see I've got level six gear, which is virtually nothing. Um, no real buffs that you wouldn't have in the game. Actually, no buffs that you wouldn't have in the game. Let's see what happens here. Now, I should be able to charge and get my spirited charge damage out. Let's see what happens. Got some guys waiting for me over here. Okay, well, you can see that my Marching Terror is doing a pretty good job there. Now, I think, okay, so I think what happens here, I think this is my Spirited Charge damage, which is interesting. I didn't know it was Piercing damage. It's actually not good. Oh, oh, and... I'm still getting it for this entire round, I guess. But I love writing these guys down. This is very much uh, thematically appropriate. There we go. Okay, so now that, I, now that I'm not charging, I don't know how that works. But I was definitely getting more damage. I'm not getting that piercing damage. In any case, this guy does some pretty good damage. This is on core, and uh, I had four CR6... Um, guys and I made pretty short work of them there so rode them down like dogs good stuff all right so here we are with a little demo at level 11 let's see here still pretty much the same armor I do remember this being in the game this is the soul shear cleansed item from Staunton Vane that actually works really well for your mount so pick that up um, aside from that I'm buffed I did pick up a few levels on my mythic path and I chose Mythical Beast, Mythic Charge, and uh, let's see how well we do here. I'm a little scared. Okay, here we go. Let's get a charge off on this Sarkorian Slayer Outcast here. Let's see, do I have all my modals that I want? I do probably want to be fighting defensively. Okay, so at 11th level, we've got a lot of stuff going on here. So A, Everybody gets intimidated. Now, actually, my intimidation check failed because as I was leveling up, like an idiot, I didn't put points in persuasion. So my intimidate checks are garbage right now. But I think you can see the damage. I mean, man, that's it. This is at level 11. 1d10 plus 36 plus an additional 46 on top of that. We haven't even picked up Mythic Power Attack yet. So I think we're going to be just fine here. And I really love how everybody else is going to be intimidated uh, by that attack. I'm going to go ahead and um, key it, key power and extra attack here. And whoa, whoa, what? Hold 
Holy crap. <laughs> that was a 223 crit at level 11. I like it. I like it. And that's the thing about glaives is that they might not crit often, but when they do, it's very noticeable. Somebody, please make me a mod. Make a mod so we don't have to look at this horrible, dazzling display animation every time we kill something. All right? Pretty good at level 11. All right, so we're going to try another demo here at 16. I did one with three CR15 mobs, and they just died too quickly. So let's actually see what happens here with six divine power. Um, oh, yeah, at this point in the game, so I'm level 16. I did increase my gear a little bit. I've got plus three items, plus two mithril plate, just things that I know I would have at this point, plus three glaive, nothing special. And I'm also mythic rank five. So um, I did choose the Aeon Mythic path here. I have Mythic Charge, I've got Unrelenting Assault, Mythical Beast, Power Attack, and Improved crit Critical. Those criticals are gonna be huge with the Glaive. All right, let's see what happens here. Let's get our first little spell, Divine Power. Okay, so one guy's down. Everybody else, hopefully, by the way, yes, is intimidated. That's going to make this go a lot easier. And I'm going to get an extra attack per round with my key power here. There we go. And I think I got a few. See, this is why I hate. This is why I hate Dreadful Carnage. Just spams the, uh, the chat. Cleaving finish, which killed somebody to another cleaving finish. Doing some work there. Taking some ability damage, though. I don't like that from this assassin, probably. I don't know what these guys are doing. Or that's my horse, actually. They're going to kill my horse. That's fine. I'll kill this guy first and then charge these. There we go. Now, let's back over here. So this guy can get some. There we go. Extra attack. And there we go. All right, that's the build. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.